Hi, we're the Krusty Krab Crew, and this is our final presentation for the Principles of Management course. We hope you enjoy our show and learn some management concepts along the way. Our group is made up of Adrian, Ashley, Chris, Edder, Marvin, and myself, Gabriella. We all contributed to the project equally, working off of each other's strengths and weaknesses. Each team member created an episode demonstrating the different forces of organizational change, all building up to the grand finale. The milestones were a collaborative effort, requiring us to communicate daily and manage our time efficiently. We worked well as a group, overcoming challenges together and helping each other when needed. We feel very fortunate to have been put in a group with such wonderful individuals, and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on. Our show takes place in the underwater town of Bikini Bottom. Situated in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, this charming city is home to various businesses, including restaurants, retail shops, and manufacturers. Most importantly, it's home to the Krusty Krab, a burger joint founded and owned by Eugene H. Krabs. It is our main location and setting. The Krusty Krab is popular because of the famous Krabby Patty, whose secret formula is a closely guarded trade secret. The Krusty Krab's main business competitor is the Chum Bucket, owned by Plankton, Mr. Krabs' worst enemy. Because of his lack of viable competition, Mr. Krabs is free to charge ridiculous prices for his products. Aside from Mr. Krabs, the Krusty Krab has two full-time employees, Squidward Tentacles, the restaurant's cashier, and SpongeBob SquarePants, the fry cook and janitor. Each episode focuses on a force of change, ranging from economic conditions to employee preferences and suggestions. By using humor and cartoon characters to convey management concepts, we hope to reach a wide range of audience, from children to teenagers to adults. The major theme of our storyline, as mentioned before, is organizational change, specifically the factors that cause it. Our target ma market is wide ranging. Our goal is to make a show that appeals to everyone on some level. Children will find the storyline fun and entertaining, while adults will enjoy the humor and management lessons embedded in the dialogue. Because we want to appeal to a diverse audience, we chose to use characters from the popular children's show, SpongeBob SquarePants. The series has a cross-generational appeal. It may be a cartoon, but it's a show that adults love just as much as kids do. The series offers more than surface-level jokes. It includes humor about human behavior and modern culture. Our series follows Mr. Krabs, owner and manager of the Krusty Krab, who, faced with internal and external pressures, must decide whether to adapt to the changes and move forward, or stay stuck in his ways and risk losing the business. Now we'd like to introduce you to our main characters. To your left is Squidward, the disengaged employee. He has a sarcastic attitude and fails to accept his own personal shortcomings. Squidward sees himself as misunderstood and unappreciated, blaming others for his failures. Squidward hates his job, the Krusty Krab, Krabby Patties, and his peers at work. Despite his dissatisfaction, he makes little effort to find a different job and has attempted to quit on only a few occasions. One reason for this is the fact that it has been shown that even SpongeBob, the better worker, gets paid very little. So Squidward, kn Squidward knows that Mr. Krabs would be too cheap to raise his pay even if he put more effort into his job. Unlike SpongeBob, he doesn't have an emotional commitment to the Krusty Krab and is unlikely to go the extra mile or take initiative on getting a task or project completed. However, given Mr. Krabs' treatment of employees, his attitude towards the company is more realistic than SpongeBob's. To his right is Plankton, Mr. Krabs' self-proclaimed archenemy. He despises Mr. Krabs because his own restaurant, the Chum Bucket, is extremely unsuccessful. Plankton represents competition, specifically the corrupt side of it. 
He is a devious, manipulative, and unscrupulous business rival. Plankton's business plans all revolve around stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula so that he can copy it and make the chum bucket popular. He is motivated by greed and his desire for business success. To his right is Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs tends to worry about profits more than the needs of his employees or customers. He often goes to rationally great lengths to acquire or avoid losing money with little, if any, regard to the safety or well-being of others. His treatment of employees is just as bad. SpongeBob's and Squidward's wages are extremely low, and he often overworks them to the point of exhaustion. Because SpongeBob adores him, Mr. Krabs is often able to take advantage of SpongeBob, who is sometimes gullible enough to work long shifts without overtime pay. Patrick is SpongeBob's best friend, an unemployed and lazy, self-proclaimed expert in the art of doing nothing. His dream is to have a job, but because of his lack of common sense and overall cluelessness, he has trouble with even the simplest of tasks. He has no direction, viewing everything with a short-term approach. He is also the number one fan of Krabby Patties and dreams of working at the Krusty Krab with SpongeBob. Last but not least is Spongebob, who is a model of employee engagement. He always has a great attitude, loves his job, and is extremely loyal to the company, even though he has a terrible boss. Spongebob is not only extremely good at his job, but he has a strong passion and an abnormal love for it. Something of a workaholic, he enjoys his job more than any other activity and is saddened whenever he cannot be at work. Despite Mr. Krabs' terrible treatment, Spongebob rarely questions his actions and looks up to him as an authority figure. Here we are going to explain how we applied concepts we learned in our Principles of Management course to our videos. In this episode, the main themes demonstrated will be the forces of organizational change. The concept we would like to emphasize is how economic conditions and employee suggestions can lead to change within a company. Causes of organizational change can originate from both the internal and external environment. Mr. Krabs begins noticing that sales are starting to decline and suspects that Plankton is back to his sneaky ways. One night, however, while watching the news, he realizes that Bikini Bottom is heading directly toward a recession and that it isn't expected to get better for some time. Instead of panicking about the potential loss of money, Mr. Krabs reaches out to his daughter, Pearl, to help him think of new ways to attract customers. The next day, he announces the bad news, causing Spongebob to burst into hysterical tears. Pearl decides to recruit Spongebob to help her with a new strategy for the Krusty Krab, knowing very well that because of his love for the place, he will put every ounce of effort into coming up with ideas. Spongebob su suggests rebranding and restructuring the restaurant so that they prosper despite the economic downturn. The new concept is called the Cuddly Crab and includes a completely new strategy and target market, specifically a younger crowd that prefers healthier food. SpongeBob's proposed strategy acts as an internal force for change, that of employee suggestions. The recession is an external force of change. Lower level employees often are an excellent source of innovative suggestions for change. However, the final decision is up to Mr. Grabs, who must make a managerial decision on whether to act on the new plan or not. This is also considered an internal force for change. As manager, he has the authority to make considerable changes to the business, especially organizational ones. Although he is worried that the change will be unsuccessful, after evaluating the need for change, he decides to move forward with the project. This episode demonstrates how an external force can lead to organizational change as well as internal forces and the benefits of using a more democratic approach to management, that is, listening to employee input. In this episode, 
plankton has long been stunted economically by entry barriers in the food service industry, specifically Mr. Krabs' famous secret recipe for making Krabby Patties. He is desperate to flip the tables on the Krusty Krab and gain the competitive advantage afforded by the secret formula. However, Plankton fails to realize that there are multiple factors that contribute to the creation of a competitive advantage. For example, superior value depends on whether the product provides more value to customers than that of the competition. In this case, not only do customers value the original Krabby Patties more, but they also value the original the service at the Krusty Krab, especially SpongeBob speed with filling orders. Rarity refers to the capabilities of one company has compared to its competition. Plankton has no employees and a rundown restaurant with equipment that should be updated. Mr. Krabs, on the other hand, has two employees, a pleasant looking space, and a renovated kitchen. As such, Plankton does not have the capabilities needed to provide the quality and quantity of food items similar to that of the Krusty Krab. However, capabilities award only a temporary advantage since Plankton can always hire employees and fix up the chum bucket. For this reason, in order to make sure a competitive advantage lasts for the long term, a company needs to create barriers that make it difficult for others to imitate their capabilities. Mr. Crab has done so by diligently guarding the secret Krabby formula. These are just a few examples from the episode that demonstrate the components of competitive advantage and how they relate to our storyline. These are a couple of our conclusions on management. I would also like to add that Many people have a misconception about who managers are and what they do. They think managers sit around all day in their fancy corner offices collecting praise for work they didn't do. Very seldom do people truly understand what it means to be a manager. In this course, not only did we learn about management concepts and skills, but we were also given the opportunity to see how diverse, dynamic, and often complicated being a manager is. I'd like to give you just a couple examples of what we learned. One, we learned that managing is hard. The job is a constant challenge. A good manager works incredibly hard to help their team excel and move forward. This takes time and dedication, working hands-on with them to get the most out of their efforts. Two, we learned that skills and success don't earn the right to manage. Sure, being good at what you do is a big part of moving up in an organization. However, it's not the secret to becoming a successful manager. What matters most is the ability to learn from past successes and mistakes and keep an open mind. Three, management is not about good instincts. While there are certainly times managers rely on their gut, most of the time, management is about thinking ahead and utilizing tools and techniques to create clear goals, outline expectations, and manage performance. Man four, managers don't know everything and can make mistakes, just like anyone else. A good manager will never hesitate to recognize and admit when he or she has made a mistake. They will use it as a learning experience. Every manager has weaknesses and should be willing to ask for help when needed. To quote Paul Hawken, good management is the art of making problems so interesting and their solutions so constructive that everyone wants to get to work and deal with them. These are our recommendations for future students and we hope you take it into consideration. Don't procrastinate. Falling behind on work will not only make the class harder and more stressful, but it will also hinder the learning process and retention of the material. Planning ahead and setting deadlines will keep the group on track and on the same page. Communication is key. Team members must clearly understand what their group is up to. They should be very clear about their roles and responsibilities in the team. If you have a team leader, I recommend that the leader delegate responsibilities based on individuals' interests and strengths and weaknesses. 
Pay attention to feedback. It's an essential part of effective learning and provides clear guidance on how to improve your project. Take time to get to know your team members. Finding common interests and fostering connections will make the process easier and more enjoyable. Who knows, maybe you'll make some new friends. Last but not least, don't forget to have fun. Instead of just focusing on the end goal, take time to enjoy the journey. We hope you enjoy this presentation and that you learned something new along the way. Please take time to read each of our reflections and thank you for everything. We hope you enjoy this presentation and that you learned something new along the way. Please take time to read each of our reflections and thank you for everything. We hope you enjoy this presentation and that you learned something new along the way. Please take time to read each of our reflections and thank you for everything.